So now the last thing I'm going to do in part two is talk about what is the globalist esoteric agenda? What is the ultimate agenda that the globalists want to see brought about? Why are they doing all of these things? Why all of this manipulation and mind control? What is the end game? What is the end result of what they're trying to accomplish? What is their agenda? And uh, J. Edgar Hoover, former FBI director, made this statement. The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. The American mind simply has not come to a realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. See, this is why we're in such denial, why we're in such cognitive dissonance about all of this. People will say, it, I don't care if I had absolute definitive proof that this is exactly what happened and how it happened. I won't believe it anyway. I will choose to believe in something that isn't true because my mind can't go there. It's too uncomfortable for me to accept. And this is the condition Hoover, right here, a former FBI director, is describing. He's describing cognitive dissonance, psychological denial that comes from the refusal to accept the fact that things are as bad as they are. David Rockefeller described this uh, 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 new world order, what they're trying to put into effect. This agenda, he described it. He said, we are grateful to the Washington Post the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the, subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. He is thanking the media for their silence and complicity in not exposing the agenda of these global manipulators and their plan for the world. He said, the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. Imagine the hubris of somebody making this statement practically out in the open, saying that the world surely would be better to be completely governed by international bankers and an intellectual elite rather than national sovereignty and personal sovereignty codified by our you know documents of higher consciousness like the Declaration of Independence that explained what the sovereignty of man is really about and where it comes from and he's saying out in the open why have that when you can have rule by international banking dynasties this is what the agenda is all about. The elite want to get back to the Babylonian gold-headed man. They want to get back to 100% total control of all the resources and all the minds on the planet as God on the earth, the all-seeing eye in human form, that which is omnipresent, omnipotent, and all-powerful. All-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-present pre everywhere. So this is the rulership of church and state in one. Church and state are obliterated and they are replaced by one sovereign ruling global elite class that, that runs the, the state and the religion. And they're one and the same. Just like Nazi Germany tried to do, but this would be the new version, the Fourth Reich, Nazi Germany on technological steroids, taken to a whole new level by advanced technology. 1984, as uh, written out by George Orwell in his brilliant novel, like the, the Ing Silk Party. You know, total 100% control of everything that is true, everything that is believed, everything that is done. They are the arbiters of truth. They're God on earth. That's what they want to accomplish. They're putting this into practice through trying to 
eliminate national sovereignty through the erasure of borders and to create national super bloc states of nations like they're doing with the European Union and like they want to try to create with the North American Union of Canada, the United States and Mexico. Uh, their plans for this have been slowed, but I think they're going to use the economic crisis to try to put them into a, a, a more forward state of advance. They want a world mercenary army to control the population of any dissenters. They want a world central bank. They want a microchipped population from which resources, food, money can all be controlled by a, a globally networked computer that they control so they know where all, where all finance, where all currency is flowing and can, can take anybody out of the loop for not going on with their, uh, along with their agenda at any given time and then they would have no ability to uh, take part in any commerce in any way. The mark of the beast, so to speak. Uh, a total surveillance grid, a technological surveillance state Big Brother is watching you, watching, getting us used and acclimatized to always being on camera, always our actions always being watched. Further and further centralization of control and further and further people policing themselves. That's what they ultimately want. The destruction of the sacred feminine aspect of our consciousness, our emotions, through the numbing out of our emotions, through our food and, and medicine particularly, the uh, um, over-prescribed antidepressant SSRI drugs, a total state of left brain prisonhood in which people become more and more uh, controlling and dominant in the, toward the left brain, even uh, females, and they become subservient to those of higher levels above them, so a race of masters and slaves. A continuing human sacrifice through endless conflict and war, wherever they choose to do it, to uh, decrease the surplus of anybody's daily um, you know, uh, produce and to keep the, the blood of human sacrifice flowing into the earth. They believe that they have to continuously sacrifice people. This goes back to the ancient rites where the ancient priest class, this, this, this uh, uh, demonic priest class would actually believe that they had to keep blood flowing in human sacrifice for the sun to make its journey across the sky each day. It, it's that that level of perversion and sickness in this occult, this occultic ideology to, to that, that wants and desires to have endless human sacrifice through war, to have a population of completely disconnected from spirit individuals that are completely hypnotized, shut down in consciousness, totally blindfolded, have the blinders on and have become pure sheep. They've become their own sheep dog. They police themselves and they have become golems. They become creatures, literally creatures without actual consciousness of their own that are completely programmable and are owned by someone else. They're made, they're totally created beings that are made by someone else. See, that's the definition of a god, is it not? It's a being that is capable of creating another being in its own image and likeness. And that's what they want to create. They want to create a being that looks like that. That's how they look inside. That's how much they rage against what is. They are actually that golem on the inside. And they want to create that in the external world because that is how they ultimately feel about themselves and the world. Julian Huxley described this total uh, 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 scientific dictatorship. He said that a really efficient totalitarian state would be one in which the all-powerful executive of political bosses and their army of managers control a population of slaves who do not have to be coerced because they love their servitude. This is a person who studied eugenics and mind control and he was explaining what the new world order that they're trying to build really is. Slaves that love their enslavement because they have become so dependent on the big daddy state. What this all boils down to once again, the new world order is about human enslavement. It is about slavery, a society of perfect evil, 
perfected evil is the state when every being in a society is both simultaneously a master and a slave. They have subordinates under them, which they dominate, push around, and are masters of, while simultaneously they follow orders from an elite class above them, and so they are subjugated and enslaved to a hierarchy above that. And it just goes on and on up the chain. No one is free in, in a society of total human enslavement, no matter how high they are on the hierarchy, because ultimately, you can get to the highest level in a physical body, in physical form, and ultimately they are serving the dark force of consciousness. They are ultimately enslaved by their own fear. They are ultimately enslaved by their own ego, and they are ultimately enslaved by illusion, the belief that you can or have a right to attempt to control anyone or anything outside of your own thoughts, your own emotions, and your own actions, because that's the only thing you have any right to control, and that's the only thing you can control. Everything else is an illusion, and if you attempt to control, you are ultimately enslaving yourself. There is no such thing as control in the three-dimensional reality. There is no such thing as authority here in this realm. Authority does not exist in this realm. There is only one authority, and no man is it. This system, this new world order, is destined to fail for that very reason. You cannot go against what is. You cannot expect to stand up to the force of creation and win. Plato made this statement. The price that good men pay for their indifference to public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. So we may get ourselves into a deep mess of things and eventually end up being ruled for a time by these tyrants, by these controllers, by these sorcerers. And if that occurs, that will only be for one reason. We did not develop the care enough to do anything about it. We did not care. Our indifference to what is going on, to the suffering that's taking place around us, is the only thing that can create our enslavement. And in fact, it is what is driving this process of enslavement. The fact that we do not care about the suffering of anyone but ourselves when we experience it is what's creating this dynamic. And that is what the New World Order is. The dark New World Order is that pyramid of enslavement controlled by an, uh, uh, an intellectual elite with no conscience that is in the know about how consciousness works, is keeping others in the dark with their own will. They're, they're using their desire to stay in ignorance against them and keeping them at lower levels of knowledge, not understanding what they're part of, being the bricks in that pyramid to build their dark new world order and put the light of creation out of this world forever. So they think they can accomplish that. And that is the idea of hell on earth, the perfect state of evil, the slave and master world in which every being is simultaneously a slave and a master of a slave. Hell on earth it has been described as the dark new world order. So in, that is the end of part three. That is the ultimate uh, uh, agenda uh, that the globalists have for humanity in mind. And uh, the, in, the, in the next part, in part three, I will be going into how to apply consciousness to this problem so that we can solve it and get out of the current state, the current um, uh, problem that we are experiencing. So part three will be solving the problem through applying what we've learned about consciousness.